Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Joe Alessi. I am the program director here at the Congressional Outlet Challenge. I'm thrilled to welcome you all uh, to today's back to school webinar session hosted by our friends at the Coder School. Um, the Congressional App Challenge is a congressional initiative uh, that works to get more students from more diverse backgrounds involved and inspired by computer science. Uh, and the Coder School has been a longtime um, ally in that fight, as well as a partner of uh, two years of the program. Uh, the Coder School is an amazing uh, institution where students have an opportunity to learn more about coding and computer science. And they've got over 50 sites around the country, um, so uh, lots of different communities um, where you might be able to um, find a coder school and, and, and learn more about anything you might be interested in the CS space. Uh, today we are joined by Dana Yi, who is the technical director of the Coder School San Mateo. Uh, she's gonna be leading us through a session today on getting started coding uh, in Android Studio with Kotlin. So uh, with that, I'll hand it over to Diana to lead today's presentation. All right, thank you, Joe. Um, hi, I'm Diana from the Coders, Yi from the Coder School San Mateo, and I am the technical director there. I will will be going over how to down or going over how to download Android and call or and use it with Kotlin. So I'll go over how to download it, set up the set up an emulator, and then I'll briefly describe how to set up a physical device if you want. But I'll also have resources for to go over that. Um, we'll build a clicker game using Android and Kotlin, and then I'll just go over, we'll have questions, we can answer questions at the end, as well as go over some resources that you guys can use to help keep learning about it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we'll go to Android Studios, and then if, to, if you haven't downloaded it, you're welcome to download it, but um, it'll take some time, but all you have to do is click the download Android Studio button, and I'll give you the terms of them, and then you would hit, and then you would select either whatever your device is. So I would select Mac Apple chip if I were to download it. We will then, so I'm going to open up Android Studio, and you guys are all welcome to follow along if you guys have it. So we would open up Android Studios, and then we would click New Project to create a new project, and then pick up or choose Empty Activity so that we can create our Android. Um, to download it, you can go to developer.android.com slash studios. So we would click next, name it. So I'm going to do, let's say, clicker game. And then I'm going to, so our package name is our, like, a uh, name for the package. So we usually go backwards of a, a website, so like com dot. Deanna Yi, and then the, the name of the um, app, which is Clicker Game. And then you can choose your language. We're going to use Kotlin today. And then um, for the minimum SDK, we would use um, 21. So. Android can be used also in, uh, if you go to download options, there is Windows, Macs, Linux, and Chrome OS that you can use them all on. And then you would click finish. And we would get our game shown up like this. And it's going to take, so it'll load. And while it loads, I will answer some questions that are coming in. So um, 
One is, does the package need to be present beforehand or how do you get one? You can just download it and it, it creates it all for you to Android Studio. So the packages will, one is given for like com.example, but other than that, it's going to be um, just whatever you type in. All right. So I'll answer other questions towards the end, but for configurations, we will do, um, don't, or just create it like you would create a new, um, or install a new one. So don't have any packages downloaded or import anything that's not already selected. So what, so we're in our main activity and this is where we create our um, app and this is the first scene that's being shown. So to actually display the view, we would go to res, layouts, and then activity main. So activity main has a, let's make these smaller. So activity main is your main screen and you can um, add text by dragging it. So for example, I would, to make a button, I would delete the text view and I can drag in a button and place it right where I want it. And that would add a button to the view. But we are gonna use something called navigation so that if you guys wanna add to it, you can make it so you, you can have multiple screens and it'll be easier to um, add them. So the way we are gonna add a navigation is right click, new, and then um, fragment, and then we're gonna choose fragment blank, and that would give us a blank fragment. We're going to call this fragment game fragment, and that is gonna be the game, or where we're gonna add our game. And then sor source language is gonna be Kotlin, and we would click finish. So the game fragment gives a bunch of template code that we won't use. So I'm gonna delete all this code. And start empty. And now our fragment game is connected to the game fragment in the XML code. So this tools colon context equals dot game fragment will be how you, how it's connected. So it's connected through that name and it has a text file or text view in there, but we are going to delete that text view because we're not going to use it. And we're going to change frame layout to constraint layout. So what constraint layout does, it allows you to make complex um, complex views without having to make nested code. So, Um, the way we will do that is I'm going to use the design and I'm going to drag it in our, on the right where the palette is, I'm going to drag in a button and put it right in the middle. 
So this button is um, going to be connected using constraints. So we're going to drag it up to constrain it to the top. And we're going to drag it down to constrain it to the bottom. And that will make it centered in the middle. We we'll also can drag it to the left and to the right to make it centered also. All right. So, um, so that we can see this act or game fragment, let's go. We're going to go to activity main and add it as or in our activity. So I'm going to delete our button and go to the XML code. So this XML code it can, is how um, it's being designed. The design is converting into this code. So we are going to add a closing tag to this constraint by doing a slash, and it will completely close it for you. So we're going to add a fragment container and that will hold our navigation. So the way we're going to do that is a less than and then um, Android X dot um, fragment and then it will show up with this fragment dot app dot fragment container view and you just click on it and it will create that fragment. View. We're going to do a match parent for the width, and that's going to cover the whole screen. And a match parent for the height, and that's going to cover the height whole screen. And then to close it, all we have to do is a slash. And the reason why we're doing a closing tag like this is because we're not gonna have any other views inside of it. A couple things we need to do though is um, make it so that we can add a navigation. And the way to do that is, um, We're going to give it an ID, which is Android colon ID. And then we're going to equals and then an at in quotes at symbol plus ID. So that's going to give it the ID name. And we're going to just give it, call it nav host. And that is our navigation. We're going to give it a name by doing Android colon name and set it to Android X dot navigation dot fragment dot nav host fragment. And that is going to, and we're gonna get an er some errors because we need to add the package, which we will add in a sec after we finish this. So we're going to add our app, which is going to be connected to our navigation graph. And the way we're going to connect it is at navigation slash navigation. And then we're going to make it our default host by doing app colon default. nav host and we're going to set it to true. So we're going to need to add our app content by doing or okay so it is added already. 
And what we are needing to do is to make it so that we get the navigation package, we need to go to our Gradle scripts, um, the module build Gradle is the one we're going to be using, and we're going to add our navigation into here. So to add it, we're going to scroll down to the dependencies. And then we're going to add an implementation. So implementation. And the one we need for navigation is in quotes, Android X dot navigation dot or colon navigation dash fragment dash KTX for Kotlin and then colon and then our navigation, which we're going to use 2.3 point, um, I think five. And then, or, yeah, we're also going to add um, wait. another the UI navigation. So we're going to have to make it the same. So implementation. And then in quotes, Android X dot navigation, and then colon navigation dash UI dash KTX, and then colon 2.35 and 2.3.5. And that is the version of it and you can find the versions um on their do their documentation also so to create a new navigation we're gonna right click res and res is just uh, resources we're gonna do a new android resource file Go to values, change it to navigation, and then we're just going to call it navigation. And we're going to press OK, and that creates a, our navigation folder. And it's just saying if you get a pop up that says required libraries, the navigation UI, and stuff, you could just click OK and it will fix your Gradle for you if you need if it needs to be fixed. So in ours, it added the or it added the Gradle. So what we're going to do now is add this fragment to the navigation by going to fragment game again. And we're going to go to our code this time and choose to do our, we're going to change this into a layout and that way it can be added to our navi navigation. So we're going to do a less than layout and then a greater than. And then at the very end, we're going to do a less than slash and that's going to close our layout. So we're gonna move our code, which are, is specifically the XML and S code into our um, layout. And then we're also gonna move the tools context into our layout. And that is because this is the top of the layer. So 
So now we have it as a layout. And then we can go to our navigation and add it. So we're going to go to navigation.xml and go to new destination. And it gives us the fragment game. So if you guys just got downloaded the uh, um, Android Studios, you guys won't have a emulator ready. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So we're going to go to AVD Manager, create a virtual device, and then um, you can choose any device you want. So I'm just going to pick, pick Pixel 4a. I'm going to choose Next. And then what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to download a system image. So you can click, I click the newest one. So if you have a M1 Mac, you're going to use ARM64. And then if you have anything else, so like a Windows computer or an Intel computer, for Macs, you're going to use the x86. And then you just click on Next. And then you can name it if you want. And then we just click Finish. And it creates a emulator for us. And we'll, I'm just going to hit the Play button so that it opens up for me. So the emulator does take some time to load. So just be patient. And while that happens, we will go into back to our fragment game and add a change our button. So the way we're going to change it is going to go to the code. And I'm just going to see where it says Android text. I'm just going to change this to click me and that'll allow us to click. So just so that we can see it, I'm going to run this. And while that runs, we should, I'm going to add a couple more things into our so that we can use them later. One is our view model, which will store our data. And then the other one is data binding so that we can add code straight to our views. So you're going to go to build Gradle. And then we're going to add a couple more impl implementations. So the view model one is implementation, quotes, Android X dot life cycle colon life cycle dash view model dash KTX and then colon dollar sign life cycle underscore version and we're doing it we're going to give it a version by defining it. So right at the top of the dependency, we're going to do a def um, life cycle underscore version equals, and then in quotes, Um, we are going to put in 2.3.1. And we have to hit sync in order for things to sync it up. And then this warning is just saying replace it. So you can hit the replace button and it will change it for us. 
And then we're going to also add something called data binding, which will allow us to add data straight into our view. So implementation and then Android X dot life cycle colon life life cycle dash lot or live data and that's also for our view model and then we're gonna do dollar sign life cycle underscore version again and the reason why we defined it is so that if we need to change it we can change it for both of them instead of having to go back and type it each And then for data binding, we're going to go scroll up into in our view model. And then we're just going to give it a build feature, build feature called data binding. So build feature and then curly braces, data binding, true. And that's going to allow us to bind data to it. And then it's giving us a little hint that we we need to add a plugin. So if you scroll up to the top, we're going to add this plugin by doing ID and then in quotes. Um, the plugin is Kotlin dash K A P T. So Kotlin that's K A P T A, and then that will get rid of that error for you. So we have the clicker game, and it's not showing the button, and that's probably because the um, navigation is not synced, or it's not, um, or the game, the game fragment's not set up correctly. So let's go into the game fragment. And we're going to add it, our view model, or our um, view, by doing override fun on create view. And then we're going to give it a inflator, which inflates the layout a container which holds our view group and the saved instance state which is just a bundle And we're going to put a question mark to make it what is known as an optional that can be, which means it can be um, null. So to inflate this view, we're just going to add a binding to it first. So val binding, and then we're doing a colon, and we're going to give it a type, which is fragment game binding and that allows us to have access straight to our layouts and get them without digging through all the um, views. So data binding util dot inflate and then parentheses, we're gonna pass in the inflator and then we're going to give it our layout, which is r dot layout dot fragment game, and then our container, and we're going to make it not attached, so false. So we're getting a unresolved reference. Huh. 
So I'm just gonna import. So the error was that it was not imported. So you could just hover over and click the import button. And then to return that binding, we're just gonna do return binding dot root and that will be our view. So we can hit the run button and uh, we're, so our saying our view model life cycle is not typed in correctly. So let's go to our Gradle and I have this actual implementation. So I'm gonna, so the implementation we need is for the view model is this life cycle version or that's, is this one. So we're just going to type in instead 2.3.5 to make it go. So in our build grader, Gradle, we can change these to 2.3.5 and 2.3.5. And then we're gonna sync it because without syncing it, it won't go through. And then we can run it again. Huh. So that means one of our spellings are wrong. So I'm gonna just take this Android dot lifecycle colon lifecycle view model and paste it in and then colon 2.3.5. I'm just gonna comment the live data for now since we're not gonna use it and then run it. There we go. So the Gradle is there. And it's having problems finding the life cycle. I'm going to delete that one. All right, I'm just also gonna comment the view model since we're not using it quite yet. Just so that we can get a button working. So it says the app is running. Do you want to terminate? So just click terminate and then it let it launch again. So there's our click me button. And now we can connect or add a point every time we do the click me. So we're going to go to fragment game. And then let's go to the design of it this time. And what we're going to do is add a text view to the corner. And I'm gonna zoom in for this. Yeah. And then we're gonna just constrain this view by clicking the text view and saying up constraint 
and left constraint. And then we can give it a, we're not gonna give it a text since we're gonna fill that in. And then we're going to also give it a ID. So score underscore label. And then we're gonna just call the score and add it. So in our game fragment, every time we click this click me, we're gonna add it to our view. So go to game fragment. And then we're gonna do, before we return the binding, we're gonna create a, a few variables. So private, which means only this file can see it. And then late init var, which is a variable. And then we're gonna make it or get our um, score. So we're gonna do score and the type, which is an int. So we are gonna set the score to zero in the on create view. So we're gonna do a score equals zero and that's what this late init can do. Or you don't even need the late init and you can just set it straight in there also. So this will, every time this view is created, it'll just set it to zero. And then every time we click the button, so let's go into the fragment game and give this button a ID. So click button. And all um, things need a fact or a ID so that you can access it in the game fragment. So we're gonna do a binding dot click button dot set on click listener. So it creates a listener. And then we're gonna do a curly brace. And then it's gonna take a view, but every time, basically every time you click on this, you're gonna just increase the score by one. So score plus equals one. And then you're just going to add a, or display it by doing binding dot score label dot text equals um, score dot to string because we have to convert it to a string. So when we run this, we're gonna terminate. And then every time you click, the score goes up. So the problem with us, the way we have it is that when we rotate, we are going to lose our data because our function, this on create view is called again. So what we're, if so a few things we can do since is add like, or change our coloring of our button. And that is in our fragment game. To ch change the coloring of a button, we're going to go and down and find the background tint, which is what's making it purple. So if you change the, if you click the dropper, 
we can change the button color by dragging it around and it will turn it red. So that is how we change those color. All right. So we're going a few information or some resources you can use since we're gonna wrap up and go to the Q&A part of the project is a app icon, which allows you to do like create. So if once you create one image, you can use this app icon generator to add all the other images sizes without having to save them yourself. So that'll save you guys time. And then another one is this will go this link here, which we will send out later. We'll also we'll go over um, the build how to build using an emulator, as well as on a physical device as you would like to use that. And then we have our documentation, which will show you how to. So if you go to Android Studios and you go to Docs, you have some tutorials of how to build an app as well as some of the activities, navigation, how to use those things. And so they give you like, instructions of how to, for example, let's say we want to use the navigation, it gives us an overview. And then it gives us like how to use layouts. So there are multiple types of layouts, which is we're using the constraint layout because it allows us to do complex constraints without nesting views, which take which causes the um, app to have a slow processor or process and performance because that's to go through a tree like this to get to a certain view. So we try to eliminate nesting when possible. And then another resource is the training training courses, which is a bunch of like labs that you can go through. So for example, we can do the basics with Kotlin and then it gives you like a badge every time you complete a task. So like you have a path and then you can follow those steps to build an app. And then lastly, we, there is the coder school where I work and this allows us or you to get help with a live teacher, whether you want online or in person and you can sign up through any of the like locations near you. Um, so that is it and we can, or I can, we can bring Wayne in and start our, the Q and A portion. All right, excellent. Let me go ahead and get Wayne back here. But Deanna, thank you so much for leading us through this. Um, I see we've gotten a good number of questions in the Q&A. If any students have questions that they would still like answered, feel free to ask those there. Let me go ahead and just find Wayne and bring him back to the floor. Excellent, you should have an invite to join us as a panelist now. Um, so I did get one app challenge question I'll take first and then I'll allow the folks in the quarter school to run it from here. Um, uh, quick questions that we got that I can answer off the top. We will be sending out a recording of this afterward um, and posting it to our YouTube channel. So look out for that in our follow-up email. Um, and someone asked about whether or not they um, needed to submit all of their code along with Congressional App Challenge app. Um, 
you do need to submit a video showcasing the code um, and the judges from your district will ask for the code as they go through the judging process, but it is not due um, at the time of submission on November 1st. So um, with that, I do think we have Wayne here now um, and I will turn it over to Wayne and Deanna to take any other questions that come in. I'm happy to take any questions about the app challenge as well. All right, so one of the questions that was asked is, does it only work on Mac? So no, it can, you can do it on any um, operating system that allows it. So they had one for um, Macs, both M1 and Intel, and then Windows and Ubuntu or so Linux and then Chrome, but I would suggest having a pretty, or it does take a lot of like processing because it the emulator can get slow. So at times you might want to be patient with that. And then um, another one is, does the package need to be present beforehand or how do you get one? Um, so the packages are always, it's just built into Android studios. So you shouldn't have to like download anything or give anything. So it should just be able to like install those. I see one other question that came in, how to pen the Android studio. Um, what do you mean by how to pen? Yeah, I wasn't sure on that either. Jaden, uh, do you want to elaborate on your question? Jaden Brown? Yeah, Jaden, if you want to go ahead and just type in an additional question with some extra context, we'd be happy to, um, uh, to, to field the question and anything that you might like to know there. Um, I had a quick question. I know at the top oh, of open, the call. Open. I guess you said open. <laughs> oh, open. Oh, oh, open. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <we> got it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, what device do you have? Because it depends on what type of operating system you have is how to open it. Uh, it says it has the Mac. Okay. So for Macs, um, it usually, so it when you install it, it will go into your launch pad and then you should be able to find it in there. But first you have to install it. So when you download your package, and I can quickly download that. Um, here. So when it downloads, you get this zip file that we that you have to open up and install first. So another one is after we create our app in the app and our Android Studio. How can we publish it to the App Store or some other way to showcase and test the app? So you can test the app through a emulator, like the one we've created. Or another one is if you want to um, connect your uh, actual device to it, you need to, and I have instructions to do that, for you guys. So to create an actual or connect it, you have to go to your settings about the phone and then build number. And you have to type, tap the build number about seven times. And then it'll have a little um, toast that shows that um, enable, that tells you that the developer mode is enabled. And then you have to enable the USB debugger to do that. Um, to post it on the App Store, 
you had to make a Andrew or a Google developer account, and that costs um twenty five that one twenty five dollar payment to become a developer. So, um, Jaden, back to your question. We it goes into your so mine went into my download, and then I could just drag to get into my applications, and it will always stay in there. After creating a new project in Android Studio, why do I see Java folder and some sample file for tests, etc.? Though I selected Kotlin when I created, so Kotlin be underneath is actually Java. So, and you can mix between Kotlin and Java during your projects, and they will actually be able to work together. So that's why it's underneath Java. It's just because it's actually Java underneath Kotlin. And oh. then another one is, will the app program do Android to only work in Android phones, Google Pixel, or can we also use it in iPhones? So Android Studios is only used for Android phones, which are for example, the Google Pixel or a Samsung device or any, or even tablets or like the Android TV. So anything involving the Android operating system can only be built through Android Studios. All right, um, and I had a quick question here while we're working through these. I, I see Jaden, so thank you. Um, just, I wanted to know if any of the students here had questions about where they could learn more about the Coder School and um, what it is they could learn at or from the Coder School. Um, where would they go about learning more information? Yeah, um, I could answer that if anybody else has any specific questions, but, but yeah, I mean, just to answer that we have, you know, over 50 locations across the country. Um, and so you can just go to www.thecoderschool.com and you should be able to find a location near you. If you can't even find one that close to you, we also will do remote sessions. And, um, you know, our core program is a very small ratio, you know, private or semi-private with a code coach, somebody Oh, we might have lost Wayne there, but I, I am glad. Let me see. Let me just drop the. I think order. is my audio back. Yeah. Yeah, we got you. Oh, okay. We got Sorry. you here. Sorry about that. Um, no yeah, and so so you can find us at you know uh, any of our locations, and we'll offer you know in person or um, or do it remote if you can't get close to us, and we'll teach. I think we lost Wayne. <laughs> oh, no. Well. Um, we will uh, make sure to send out information about the Coder School um, and how you can get involved in the follow-up email as well as to this. Um, we also have the link directly through our website. If you look at our uh, sponsor or supporter page, you will, uh, you'll be able to see that there. Um, so um, with that, uh, Deanna, do we have any other, any additional questions? Um, one from Sky. So apparently he's having trouble with his AVD manager. I think for my, for that Sky, um, can you email me personally and I can help you do that? So I can put this actually through everyone. Um, and that is um, Deanna at the coderschool.com. And you guys can email me with any questions about Android or Android Studios. And I can try my best to help you that way. Excellent. We can send that information along as well in the follow-up email if that's helpful too. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So with that, I think uh, we're coming up on the top of the hour. It looks like we've gotten most of the questions. Uh, Deanna, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I want to thank Wayne for joining us as well. And I want to thank the Coder School for being an incredible supporter of the Congressional App Challenge. Um, for students, as a reminder, uh, this year's Congressional App Challenge runs until November 1st. 
of 2021. Um, so you can register and submit your app through November 1st if you live or attend school in a participating district. Over 80% of members of Congress are hosting app challenges this year, and so the likelihood is you're eligible to participate. Uh, students can code apps um, on any topic, using any platform, um, on a, using any coding language, and so um, the skills we learned here today with Android Studio as well as um, Kotlin are an excellent way to get started um, and code something for the app challenge this year. We're so enthusiastic to see what you submit this year. We're very excited and we're looking forward to uh, reviewing those apps. So with that, everyone enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you again to Deanna. Thank you to Wayne for joining us today and we will see you all next time. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph.